Let's discuss iron sight considerations when you're going to put iron sights on your rifle. There are a lot of different designs for iron sights out there, especially for the AR-15 style. Uh, but there's also tons of iron sights out there for the AKs, the Rugers, the FALs, the G3s. There's infinite number of designs for all the different rifles out there. So uh, I have an AR-15 here on the uh, video for videoing purposes, but I'm going to try and uh, talk about this in a way that you can try and apply it to whatever rifle you have. So for detachable iron sights, first off, uh, a common configuration on a lot of rifles, such as this one right here, is they come with no sights and you can throw whatever you want on there. So if you're going to go the route of iron sights, one thing that I suggest is get a match set if possible. This right here is UTG front and UTG rear. Uh, get a match set and at the same time uh, determine if you're going to use iron sights exclusively or if you plan on using an optic. And I say that because if you're going to use an optic of some, so of some sort, whether it's a red dot or some sort of magnified optic, then some folding iron sights would be beneficial to you. But if you're going to do exclusively iron sights on your setup, then just stick with a fixed iron sight. It's going to be a little bit more robust for you and um, you'll actually have a little bit more um, windage and elevation adjustment out of those typically. Now there are some folding sights that are insanely good. Uh, they're typically a little bit more expensive and then there are some folding sights that are absolute crap. The same with the, the fixed sights. Um, one thing to note, uh, when you're using sights that attach, make sure you have a good attachment system. Make sure the bolts are good. And at the same time, don't hesitate to use something like blue Loctite or something like that. Some sort of uh, thread locker that's not too hard. You don't want to use like the red stuff or all the real high heat stuff. Just use the stuff that just basically what you're trying to do is keep the sights from wiggling loose due to either vibration or heat from use. Uh, for iron sights, the biggest thing when you're getting into iron sight shooting and it doesn't matter what type of irons whether they're peep sight uh, more traditional blade sight what have you is you want to make sure to take a little bit of time and do your research on that particular site uh, for example these sites are AR-15 it's an A2 rear sight setup you can see right there the windage drum and the elevation drum that's set up like an A2 and this is also an A2 style as well but some considerations that I have to take into account is, well, the sights, how far they are from each other. Uh, the sight radius actually makes a difference in regards to this A2 windage drum right here. This was set up for a specific windage adjustment, or excuse me, elevation adjustment for a A2 carry handle up to an A2 fixed front sight on a 20 inch barrel rifle. So this is a little bit different. So I have to take that into account. My elevation adjustments and my windage adjustments may not be exactly the same. So I have to account for that. And that actually takes just a little bit of research and going out and actually shooting. Uh, and I'll flip the rifle over to show you why it's important. If I was to use this drum right here, which if you're familiar with these, it starts off on the 300 yard setting. I can move it up to 400. 500, 600, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, um, with these particular settings, though, on this particular rifle, it may not ring true. So, I need to get out and do some shooting, develop my own dope, and figure out exactly where these things hit because there is a small difference. So, um, the other consideration for these is how to sight in your sights. Make sure you're sighting them incorrectly based off of how you're going to use your rifle. For example, this rifle has multiple different, I can do a uh, 100 yard sight in, I can do a 50 yard sight in, a 25 meter sight in, I can do all different kinds of stuff. I just have to figure out how I'm going to sight in the gun based off of how I think I'm going to use it. At the same time, learning how to range a target with your iron sights is a very useful skill. 
Uh, the front sight on this is only so wide, so I can superimpose that onto a given target if I know the width of, let's say, if I'm using this for long-range self-defense or, uh, you know, even for military applications, law enforcement applications. If you look at the width of the front A2 front sight post compared to the width of the shoulders of a person at a given range, how can you range that using the width of the front sight post? And you can actually do that. It just depends on uh, you just getting out there and there's actually some stuff online on how to do that. And not all front sight posts are created equal. Some like these, the standard size, uh, the A2 size, there are thinner ones, there's thicker ones, there's different profiles. Uh, there's a lot of different things out there. So really take that into account. Uh, the biggest thing is just learning how the site works in low light, in bright light. Um, thinking about, in this case, height over bore considerations for close quarters type stuff and how that's going to affect where this rifle's point of aim is at close quarters. That's really important. And there, there's a lot of other factors out there just depending on the different rifles. I'm kind of focused a little bit on the AR-15, but this kind of applies across the board. So the biggest thing is just to do your research and really study up on those iron sights. A lot of people tend to knock iron sights, and I get it. I, I know optics are great. I like optics. I like red dots. I like magnified optics. But you have to remember, uh, there's people out there right now that are using black powder single shot open sight rifles, and they're shooting 1,000 yard competitions with them. So uh, don't discount the iron sights you can do a lot with them. The biggest thing is just getting knowledge on them, making sure they're a good set, making sure they're a match set, making sure they're mounted well. Uh, they do your rifle justice and then reading up on them, taking that time to read the dry material that tends to put people to sleep at night, learning a lot about how that site works and all the little tricks about that site is really going to benefit you from turning you to just a casual rifle shooter into more of a rifleman. So, all right, thanks a lot for watching. Feel free to put your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always, keep it safe.